this tutorial, we'll see how to use an effect that requires the use of an additional layer with our plugins in HipFilm. We will use Real Smart Motion Blur and Real Smart Motion Blur Pro with vectors for this example. Please watch the intro tutorial first for the basic usage of our plugins in HipFilm. We'll start with Real Smart Motion Blur and see how easy it is to set a variable amount of blur as well as even to remove blur from a clip. Real Smart Motion Blur works great on live action, various kinds of CG, hand drawn, or stop motion animation. In this example, we have a live action BMX shot. You can see where some motion blur would help this shot. It's as easy as adding Real Smart Motion Blur to our shot, going to Main BG Blur Amount, and adjusting the amount. We can also use GPU here. Now we can take a look at Real Smart Motion Blur Pro with vectors. Here we have 3D rendered images and also motion vectors rendered from a 3D application, in this case Maya, but most 3D rendering systems, including Cinema 4D, allow you to render such a render pass. We can use these motion vectors to generate the motion blur in Real Smart Motion Blur. This allows you to add motion blur in post, and it's also much faster than rendering motion blur with your 3D application. And it's sometimes better as it allows you to color correct before you blur. We just add Real Smart Motion Blur Pro with vectors to our spider, and you can see where it says motion vectors. We can choose our motion vector file. Now we can just adjust the amount of blur like we did in the previous example. Make sure you turn off the layer with the motion vector's visibility so it doesn't show up in your final render. Okay, so what happens if this looks like it isn't working properly? Instead of a proper blur, you might get a uniform or a diagonal blur, even when the object is stationary. This might be a gamma issue. In other applications, sometimes we need to interpret footage so the colors that mean some particular motion are not transformed by color management. Let's see what I mean by that. Let's call this example case one. We're going to do a little troubleshooting. If it wasn't working properly and we suspect it's a gamma issue, possibly a setting in your 3D render or possibly something that occurred on the, on the import, we need to figure that out. We can do that by checking a static frame, one that has zero motion. If your motion vector file has zero motion vectors, then the expected values should be 0.5 and 0.5 in red and in green channels. I can apply effect with a color picker. This one doesn't have 0.5 and 0.5. We see that it reads 0.7 and 0.7. What we need to do then is pre-comp that layer or make a composite shot and apply the gamma effect to make it 0.5. Often it's gamma 0.454. Now if we go back to our composite and use this pre-comp as our motion vector file and measure the values again, we should get 0.5 and 0.5. What this means is, is that if we apply this correction to the sequence we render out of our 3D renderer that we originally used, the new result should give us the proper motion blur we expect. Now, let's talk about another scenario we may run into. Some renders such as Cinema 4D will export the alpha channel separate from the motion vector pass. This is another case where you need to use a pre-comp to put the alpha channel back with the motion vector pass. What we'll need to do is to combine that alpha channel back with the motion vector pass. So we use the alpha of the RGBA color image into the alpha of the motion vector image by using this effect called set mat. Then we can go to the settings for set mat. We choose spider as the source layer. The mat source will be alpha and the blend mode will be replace since we're replacing the alpha channel. Now we can pre-comp this by right mouse clicking and making it a composite shot. We can select Move with Layer for Masks, Effects, and Transform Properties. Now we can add our RGB spider, add Real Smart Motion Blur vectors to our spider, and choose our pre-comp motion vector file. Now we're back in business and should have the result we're looking for.
Even when we have to make adjustments to our motion vector passes, when using them with our Real Smart Motion Blur with Vectors plugin to make them work properly, we still save time compared to re-rendering in the 3D renderer.